hello guys so welcome to my channel rk gate tutorials if anyone is not subscribed please subscribe my channel for the uh, gate classes for electricals so without wasting much time now let us get into the class class 4 now uh, protection so as we have completed the uh, open circuit faults and its consequences and analysis now let us go to the short circuit fault short circuit fault so let us go back go to short circuit faults so as you already knew that uh, short circuit fault uh, can be caused by uh, breakdown of insulator insulation and uh, over the conductors near the conductors are falling on the three branches falling the three branches on the lines may cause the line to line faults uh, which may flow abnormal currents so when the boards or snakes uh, bridge in the gap between the cross arms and the conductor so that also uh, allows the path to flow the current uh, i mean to become say it is a possibility of line to ground faults and of course sometimes collapsing of uh, supporting towers uh, due to some natural calamities like floods and earthquakes etc etc so these are all the different ways of uh, short circuit uh, faults uh, takes place so that is the occurrence of the short circuit faults that is okay now let us analysis what is a uh, short circuit fault and uh, how what is the consequence of the short circuit fault so as uh, if you can draw the single line diagram so this is a source and this is the transmission and of course so let us take till here only here we have load let us assume this and let us say the load uh, impedance z load is equals to let us say some thousand ohms now we have this line uh, let us say the z line so uh, z line b 10 ohms now if you assume there is a fault here there is a such circuit fault here due to the some line to line faults or line to ground faults etc etc so if there is a fault then what happens let us say the operating voltage v is equals to 100 volts so operating voltage v is equals to 100 volts let us assume the two conditions now one is normal and another one is fault one is normal condition and the next one is fault condition short circuit fault condition so what happens during the normal time normal condition so what is the current flowing in this uh, uh, network so as there is no fault during the normal condition so the current i is equals to v by z total z total in the sense v by z line plus and z load so that is nothing but it is going to be 100 volts by so how much this total going to be 1000 plus 10 is equals to 1010 so this is amps so approximately you are going to get 0 0.099 amps etc so approximately you are going to get one amp so this is the i during normal condition so let us go back to the fault condition so i of let us say fault condition so the voltage the current fault current is nothing but the voltage by impedance so here the fault took place here which means we have to consider the impedance from here to here only we cannot consider this load as the, there is no load as the as the current is not going to the load so we cannot consider this so we just have to consider the this impedance only so z line i mean fault impedance this is taken as fault impedance so that is equals to 100 here yeah voltage is 100 and z line this is the fault impedance 
so as we are cal calculating the fault current we have to take the fault impedance from here to here so that is z line is equals to 10 so this is volt this is ohms so how much are going to get it is going to be 10 amps 10 times so here the fault current is 10 amps nothing but it is 10 times the normal current is 10 times the normal current which means the current during the short circuit fault is far more than the normal current so from this what we can conclude the short circuit results in short circuit fault results in the flow of over currents in the line so the consequence of the short circuit is short circuit fault due to short circuit fault what happens the flow of over currents the flow of over current this is what is an important point here due to short circuit fault so there is a flow of over currents in the circuit so this is the consequence of the short circuit fault so here what happens when it happens what happens when the over currents flows so that is an important uh, issue again so let us take one more slide so as we know electromagnetic torque so electromagnetic torque torque let us say T E M so which is directly proportional to pi i so this is a, a, a relation we have so in the short circuit fault we have seen the fault current is very high so as the current is directly proportional to the electromagnetic torque which means the torque gets rises so the electromagnetic torque gets rises as the current is very much more now what happens to the speed the speed we have a formula that uh, speed is equals to the prime over torque minus the electromagnetic torque upon damping coefficient p so here the p is damping coefficient so b is damping coefficient so the speed what happens to the speed so as we have we have just seen that the there is a drastical rise in electromagnetic torque due to the rise in current in the short circuit situation short circuit fault situation so as the electromagnetic torque increases so let us say omega is directly proportional to prime over torque minus electromagnetic torque so here the electromagnetic torque is increased so what happens to the result the resultant of this torque gets decreased which means the speed of the induction machine gets reduced so here the speed gets reduced then what happens of course as the speed gets reduced the frequency also gets reduced which results in as frequency as generated emf is or the emf is directly proportional to the uh, frequency the voltage also gets reduced so these are the consequences during the 
short circuit fault so what happens so when the short circuit takes place there is a rise in current there is a rise in for, for current there is a highest over over current will flow in the circuit which in turn increases the electromagnetic torque so as the electromagnetic torque increases the speed decreases as the speed decreases the frequency falls as the frequency falls voltage got falls so this is the consequence of the short circuit fault so this is what is the short circuit fault now uh, let us see one more thing the short circuit fault has been completed almost but what happens then short circuit current increases then what what are, what are the problems we are going to face okay here we are there is a increase in the short circuit current and of course there is a fall in the voltage and frequency decreases uh, speed decreases mechanical torque increases i mean electromagnetic torque not electrical not mechanical sorry so electromagnetic torque increases that is fine then so what are the problems again due to the short circuit current now this is most important now one more thing so there are two types of problems arises so mainly two type of problems arises due to short circuit faults so let us see what are the two what are the two uh, problems that will arise during the short circuit fault so short circuit fault so let us so what are the two so one is thermal stress thermal stress and another one is mechanical stress mechanical stress one is thermal stress and another one is mechanical stress so this is what is the uh, thing is going to happen now as the current increases what happens i square r losses i square r with respect to time gets increases so due to as the current increases what happens to the heat then the heat it produces so let us see here first one here excessive heat is produced excessive heat is produced so this is comes under the thermal stress next so due to which there is a melting of conductor even if it exceeds there is a melting of conductor there is a melting of conductor and as it it exceeds more then what happens the failure of insulation or damage of insulation takes place failure of insulation or the damage of insulation takes place so these are the uh, consequences comes under the thermal stress now let us go back to the mechanical stress this is the second one these are the two problems which we are going to face due to the short circuit fault so one is thermal stress so during the thermal thermal stress this all will take place due to this relation so this is the power loss due to the power loss so due to this i i the fault current is more there is an excessive heat so which causes a melting of conductor and failure of insulation these are the consequences and at the same time mechanical force stress let us come to the mechanical stress so as we know two conductors separated so this is one conductor this is one conductor let us say here the current flowing is i1 and here the current flowing is i2 and the distance between them is let us say small t 
So we know that the force is directly proportional to the product of currents I1, I2 by the square of the distance between them. So let us say if the two uh, the same current flows as a short circuit falls, of course, the there is a flow of same current. So during normal condition, so let us analyze here normal as well as fault. Normal and fault. So here during normal condition, I1 is equal to I2. So force is directly proportional to I square by T square. So this is okay. Now coming to the short circuit time fault, uh, when we come to the short circuit fault, so short circuit current uh, is 10 times the normal current that we have seen here just before. Here, short circuit current is 10 times the normal current. So here, normal current. Now what happens to the force? The force is directly proportional to here normal currents i1 i2 i square which means 10 10 i n square which means 100 i n square 1 d square so due to which the force gets enormously increases the force is extremely increases so which means there is a dislocation of the is a dislocation of insulation in the conductor there is a dislocation of insulation and conductor so these are the two consequences which raise problems which results of due to the short circuit fault one is thermal stress another one is mechanical stress Mecha due to mechanical stress there is a uh, dislocation of the conductor as well as the um, insulation and here due to thermal stress there is an excessive heat melting of conductor and failure of insulation may take place so these are the two things you should remember thank you for this class and uh, we'll meet in the next class uh, with uh, more in information regarding the release and uh, i will explain the one single end diagram also one is short circuit and open circuit and how it is tends to let us see okay we will go to the protection system mainly in the next class i mean i will introduce the relays and circuit breaker configuration in the next class um so if not still subscribe please subscribe my channel for the more gate classes and uh, i will surely provide all the classes thank you very much signing off